We're leaving the bus to go exploring today at a national monument. And guess who is not gonna get dehydrated this time? This chick. I thought it was Chiricahua, like cow, C-O-W, and I used to think in my head, Chiricahua-bunga. <laughs> this area is famous for the, uh, the Chiricahua Apache that were prominent in this area uh, before all the white people came in and stomped them into the yeah, so, reservations. So do you know, is Chiricahua, is Chiricahua an Apache word? I think it is, yeah. Because I know, I read online that the Apaches called this the land of the standing up rocks. They were very creative. <laughs> yeah, this whole area names. is like, except the dragoons, but you got the Chiricahuas, the Huachucas, uh -huh. um, the whole Sky Island area, they call this area Sky Island um, because of all the uh, mountain ranges. Mountain ranges in this area. There's actually more mountain ranges in Arizona than in, uh, I think, any other state, <laughs> turns out. Because you got like the Rocky Mountains going through some states, but this has multiple ranges of mountains. So yeah. and it goes on and on and on. Yeah. We'll put the answer right there. I already see the hoop -doos. We're almost there. Well, at least they have restrooms. Hey, I want to ask about the, uh, the passport, because I think I qualify for the passport. What passport? The uh, National Park passport. How do I get a passport? A passport is a booklet that you buy, and they're available right inside, and then people, what they do is they stamp them. At each location. And say, hey, I've been going to all Let's the Let's do it! All right. <laughs> So is this all the different trails that are available here? Uh, it looks like it, yeah. And then over to Fort Bowie. Oh. What do you think of this book? Ooh, that's a really good one. Yeah, Since we're always, we should probably get <laughs> you're getting that. it. <laughs> we're always saying, wonder what kind of bird. I know, is. right? I, I wish we knew. Kind of know. Okay, let's do it. We'll be turning over a new leaf. All right, see. Somewhere here, oh, page 80 something or other, she said. 86 or something? There's not one specifically for Chiricahua? No, surprisingly, I thought that's what I would find. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Got it. What does it say on the front of the passport for what? National monuments? Passport to your national parks. National the, parks. Kind of goes into the history of national parks, it looks like. This brings up an interesting question, though. Do you guys know the difference between a national park and a national monument, or why there even is two different ones? I had to look this up because I was wondering. Look at this brave little fella. What's up, buddy? He's having a little drink at, at Ye Old Fountain. Come here. We're pretty sure this is a Mexican J. For Chevy. He's so pretty. I guess Mike and I are becoming avid bird watchers. We can't help it. I guess it just comes with age. 
lower rhyolite trail mm -hmm. because the rock pillars are made out of um, rhyolite tuff. I've never heard of a stone called tuff before, but there's a first time for everything. Echo Canyon and Masai Point, is that loop or you have to walk this distance and then return this distance back? Oh, uh, this one says loop. The other ones don't say loop. We'll just start. We'll do the lower rhyolite and see where it goes. Okay. Okay, we're here. Here's the rhyolite canyon all the way up. So, no, it's not a loop. It'll just take you up to these places. Like oh, it gives it right here. Round trip hike 3, round trip hike 7.3, 5.2, yeah. 12.5, 6 hours. So, we're just going to have to do this one. Junction at Sarah Dimming Canyon. Okay, Miss Sarah Dimming, you're, we're headed your way. That's right. There's a bird with a little orange chest. Oh, we're going to use our little thing when we get back. I'm going to identify all our birds. So I found out that there are 423 national parks in the United States, which is a lot more than I thought. That's an average of like 8.5 parks per state. And I bet you anything states like Rhode Island don't have eight state parks. So probably most of them are in like the four corner states, <laughs> which we're one of. All right. And there are only 129 national monuments, which is really interesting to me. So then I had to figure out what is the difference between a national park and a national monument. And it turns out it depends on what the land is being used for. So I wrote this down so I would get it right. Oh, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> the primary difference lies in the reason for preserving the land, right? So national parks are prever preserved for their scenic, inspiration, education, and recreational values. National monuments have objects of historical, cultural, or scientific interest. So their content varies greatly. Yes. There was some part I didn't write down that um, how they become a national monument. Either the president can make it a national monument or like through legislature, like an act of Congress or whatever. Oh, okay. That's cool. Right? Yeah, that was interesting too. I wish we could see the one with the pinnacle balancing rock today. That might have to be for the next hike. Yes. Ooh, this looks like a mysterious enchanted forest right here. Well, you guys, I'm afraid we have to apologize. The battery died halfway through our hike and I didn't have another battery in my backpack. So we're gonna do the next best thing and take the driving tour through the National Monument. formation. It does look like organ pipes. There's where one of the hoodoos has fallen and wedged in the crevice. Huh. Isn't that funny? Oh, I love this place. Who do you love? I love that guy. Here's where we can learn about 
columns, pinnacles, and balanced rocks. Look at that little balancing guy. You guys, there's so much more to this national monument. There's so many different hiking trails to go on. We're definitely gonna have to come back here another time. But we had a little problem with the Jeep. <laughs> so we have to cut it short today. We had a, we got up to the near the top there and as we pulled over and stopped, the Jeep started to overheat. And well, not overheat, it just a bunch of steam was coming out from underneath the uh, hood and uh, I we had, the only thing I can figure is that we recently had a tune-up done on the Jeep because when I rushed out there to see what was going on hoping it was something minor it was the cap to the radiator it was just was this. was you know when you open a radiator cap you open it to the uh, unlocked but or halfway open position so it doesn't fly off and water will bubble out around it that's the way it was sitting it wasn't tightened so all I had to do was just tighten it and it, it solved the problem so I can only imagine that it just when they topped off the fluids or whatever it uh, was left undone so we're still at good temperature we didn't lose that much fluid we're just gonna top it off with water down here and then I'm gonna have to put some uh, coolant in it when we get uh, back home but oh well it was getting kind of late anyway so and it wasn't a disaster, thank God. Crisis averted. I guess we're on our way home. Dinner? I know, I'm starving. I want to go out to Isabella's again. Okay. <laughs> I'd go out there, I'm going to get that same burrito you got. That was so delicious. It was. And that margarita. I want those fish tacos again. You want to Dr. Pepper? I do. Mmm. Un grande Stella. See. Yes. There you go. Thank you. I'll have the fish tacos. And flour corn cake. Corn cakes. I'm having the green chili chimney. Uh huh. Wet. With green Red sauce. or green? The green sauce. Okay. And you want the beans? Yes, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Hashtag not sponsored, unfortunately. So delicious. So, I'm eating pescatarian tonight. You're not eating anything Italian. You're eating carnivore tonight. I'm even um, porcatarian. <laughs> so, I grew up in Safford, Arizona, which before now, I would have always said that Safford has the best Mexican food ever. But now I've had to change my mind. It's definitely, Isabella's is my new favorite. So if you're ever in Wilcox or even anywhere near Wilcox, definitely go out of your way to come to Isabella's. And eat anything on the menu. Anything you pick is going to be fantastic. Just is it me or does anybody else like judge the restaurant based on how good their salsa is? I totally do. Like the, if the salsa is really good, you know the rest of it's going to be amazing. This place has great, great salsa. It's hard to get good Mexican food in a lot of places in the United States though. Like you have to live in the Southwest to have good Mexican food. Otherwise, your only option is like Taco Bell. And on a scale from 1 to 10 of Mexican food, Taco Bell rates zero. <laughs> oh, I just said it. Let me just say that I've always said that Mexicans invented Mexican food, but Taco Bell perfected it. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Taco Bell is a sad excuse for Mexican food. You better stop it. I'm going to push you out of your chair. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Oh my gosh. So I made the mistake of eating some of this habanero sauce. They have a salsa bun over there. My face is on fire right now. Because <laughs> it was creeper salsa. You take like the first two or three bites Nothing. and there's no temperature and then all of a sudden it sneaks up on you and burns your face off. Yeah, it's pretty rough right now. Kind of suffering right now. Mmm. Mmm. 
This is my chimney. Oh. Curry's fish tacos, which they are the bomb. Well, this is the aftermath. I'm completely stuffed. Mike's face is probably still burning off. Mexican food's why I'm fat. <laughs> but we do have one more treat for you guys. Because it's mail time. What? Mail well, time in a restaurant? I know. Who does that? We need that. We are gonna need this though. Here, come nice on. So Alright, you guys ready for this? Actually, my nose is running because of the habanero sauce. <laughs> How about it took me out? You ordered hot sauce? No. Look, we got hot sauce. I'm just kidding. So, we're not there yet, but we're going to show you our hot sauce anyway. This was actually thrown in with a deal. Mule sauce. Because we ordered from Sticker Mule. Are you guys ready? New sticker, new version. This is the grand. Never before seen, the 2021 issue. What do you call that? 2021? <laughs> the 2021 version. version? The Episode. new sticker. <laughs> the new sticker, you ready? Boom! What? Oh, I love that it. That is our actual license plate from our bus. We literally took a photo of it to have the stickers made. Oh, it looks so good. I love it. Yes. All right, we got to get it out of this plastic. So yeah, so you can better. see it. There's our Arizona license plate sticker. So these are available on Etsy. And you and have it, to. And have it's free one. shipping, so that's why. If you have the diamond sticker, you have to add this to your collection so you can have every bus face sticker. Right. right. Get them while they're hot. Oh, they're so good. I love it. Yeah, those are really cool. They did like turn out really good. Oh, I know what. We should stick a bus face sticker somewhere on the block of this section of the street where Isabella's restaurant is located. And then when you come here to eat, if you find the bus face sticker, we'll send you one for free. That's a good one. You have to take a photo of it and post it though, so we know it happened. But don't you guys mob this place because these are expensive. <laughs> <laughs>